everybody, this is Martin John, and I am talking to you about the Tao of the day, the Tao Te Ching. The Tao Te Ching is an ancient Chinese text written about 600 BCE, and it's full of enigmatic wisdom and insight, all sorts of, you know, mystery and, and poems and things, but it's a lot of insight. It has 81 short verses that provide powerful guidance and how to live a harmonious life or life, uh, a reasonable life, as I like to say, in balance with Tao or the underlying nature, uh, the underlying natural order of the universe, right? Like that is what Tao is, is the underlying natural order of the universe. With its poetic language, the Tao Te Ching offers timeless advice on how to cultivate inner peace, a positive outlook, and a life of effortless simplicity. And that's really what we're looking for. Like your life, like being is so easy. And yet we have turned toward logic and the mind and intellect, which really kind of gets in the way of our ability to live effortlessly, our ability to be effortless uh, components of the whole. We want to think our way out of things, but really, um, the Tao is a way to be still, uh, and a Tao, and the Tao is a, you know, it's timeless. It was written 600 BCE, and here we are talking about it today in uh, 2022, right? So it's, it's like literally almost 3,000 years old, and here we are continuing to talk about this, continuing to find insights within the Tao. I mean, I've written... Um, I've written a, a version of it and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, uh, that's going to be available to you. And so here I am. Uh, I'm going to read number 46 today, which is knowing when to stop. You know, when knowing when to stop is a really important aspect of being. So when Tao is followed, shelter, food, and water are prioritized. Going counter to Tao, war, excess, and hoarding are praised. He who believes there isn't enough is cursed to never have enough. He who believes he must acquire will acquire nothing that lasts. There is no greater waste of time or energy than being discontent. Therefore, the master knows what is enough and is content to stop there. And that's it. Like that's, that's, <clears throat> that's one of these great ways of understanding the world, right? When Tao is followed, when you follow the natural order of the universe, when you follow the natural order of things that are, you know, connected to the universe and not just you, not just your ego, not just, not just the things that you want. Um, but when you follow the natural order of things, what gets prioritized is food, water, and shelter. That's what we start with, right? When Tao is followed, shelter, food, and water are prioritized. Do you prioritize those things? Because you might, but you might also be taking them for granted because those things are so, those things can be very prevalent and those things can be something that it's like, well, if you have shelter, you're good. If you have food, you're good. If you have water, you're good. But then everyone's just like, well, I want a bigger house. I want more food. I want, I want excess. The next line is going counter to Tao, war, excess, and hoarding are praised. Now we are talking war, but what is war? What is war like in the grandest scheme? Okay, we can look at like World War II, we can look at the war in uh, Ukraine, we can look at war in that sense. But what about war in your life? What about war and warring? in your life and in your body and in your family. Go encounter to Tao, war, excess, and praise, or <clears throat> war, excess, and hoarding are praised. Hoarding, like holding on to things, hoarding money, hoarding things, hoarding food. Those things are praised when going counter to Tao. Excess is praised when going counter to Tao. War is praised going counter to Tao. Even, even if it is for a quote-unquote good cause, there is no 
moral war. There is no excuse for being at war. When following Tao, shelter, food, and water are prioritized. Those are the things that make the most sense. You have water, you have food, you have shelter. And that will give you everything that you need. And when your shelter can provide food and water because of its location or its or, or where whatever, like that's that's a treasure. That's the most that you could really ask for. Everything else, everything else is just can come from greed, excess, and hoarding. And a lot of people out there want to say, well, there's no, <clears throat> there's no uh, honor in playing small or whatever, thinking that, well, when you only want shelter, food, and water, like you can only want those things. No, that's not what this is saying. What this is saying is that you prioritize those things. And sure, you could say, okay, I prioritize that, and then I'm going to go and I'm going to fill my house with stuff. And it's like, that's fine. You can do that. But are you still paying attention to the house? Are you still paying attention to the fact that this is shelter? Are you paying attention to food? Or are you just going to the store and buying what they give you? Are you prioritizing the health of the food? Are you prioritizing the health of the water? Are you prioritizing the health of the shelter? Those are the things that, you know, when we can, when we can, consume our days with the, those thoughts, then we can be who we are rather than, oh, well, I got to be seen as having a bigger house. I got to be seen as having more money. I got to be seen as having access. And war, you know, war in this sense, as we talk about, you know, going counter to Tao, war, excess, and hoarding are praised. War could be comparison war could be well i'm at war with you because and you could be friends and at war just to one up each other so we gotta like look at the look at the whole spectrum of what these mean right what these words mean what is the spectrum of the word war what is the what is the smallest way of being at war what is the most insignificant way of being at war and that might just be comparing to another person? What is the smallest way of having excess? What is the smallest way of hoarding? Those are ways when we can look at the full spectrum rather than just looking at the extreme, right? The extreme hoarding, like hoarders, oh, your house is full of stuff and all of these things. But like, where are you hoarding because we all hoard a little bit. We all tend to you know, lean towards excess a little bit here and there. And if we can identify those places, if we can identify those things, then we will definitely find um, in ourselves a place where we can grow. Um, all right, so that's 47. And I can return to that, but I got Isabella um on and we're gonna we're gonna visit with isabel for a bit and see if she has a number for us and and then we will return to 47. hello my, hello, hello, my friend how are you how good. are you my dear good how are you i am well i am well today i get to go in and have an mri no way yeah you okay. know mris are so exciting i don't know if you've ever had one i um, have not I have yeah. researched it. Um, there, um, I can't remember his, his first name. J oh, James Zimmerman was the one uh, that is developed that your, the tech. Is it your family? No. <laughs> when, I, <laughs> when I researched it, I was laughing because I'm like, oh my God, Zimmerman, James Zimmerman. But it was in the 1960s and 70s, he worked for Ford. The, the auto company yeah. and Ford had a research and development. They were probably diversifying, right? Cause they had all this money mm -hmm. and he mm -hmm. was the one, he came up with the technology for the fMRI machine. Oh, the fMRI. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and so the MRI, you know, like it is, it's fascinating. So what, why are you getting an MRI today? 
Um, I have M I have MS, or I have a diagnosis of MS, and so mm -hmm, we keep track mm -hmm. of the lesions, and we we're gonna look at my brain and my spine. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Yeah. Do you um have they put you on um lithocin? Like, do the, do you eat like fatty foods because that really helps with the 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 coating of the the nerves, the myelin? Yeah. The myelin. Uh, no one, no one put me on it. I mean, I have, I have a very specialized diet that is high in fat. Okay, good, 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 good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 No, I, I mean, I did my own work. Good. I mean, my, my doctors didn't, my doctors are my, the doctor that I initially had was convinced that diet's not going to do anything. Um, but, uh, I changed my diet just because I don't care what he has to say. Um, and, uh, my current doctor is not necessarily um like like she's great uh but you know like she's on she's on board but i'm 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 holding the reins so. oh good 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 yeah. yeah what was the metaphysical reason for ms did you look that up oh i don't care i had i got a diagnosis of it i don't I, there's no well, because, yeah. you know, any, any discordance in the body, there's like emotional reasons. Oh yeah. Well, you know, like, like there is, there are, so for me, I look at how it affected me because MS affects people differently. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I looked at it, how it affected me and it affected me, um, in hemispheres. So the right side and the left side and my right side lost temperature sensation and my left side lost motor function. And so I look at that <sighs> as being, I look at that as being, um, you know, there's a couple of things. One, there's communication, right? Like, uh, because the idea of MS is like how it works is that you lose communication because the myelin sheet is, so you're not communicating with the whole body right and so that's a, wow. that's a way that i look at it right like yeah. where am i not where am i not communicating in my life not to yes. other people necessarily but right, to right, myself right. to my soul to you know yes. the whole then i also look at okay my left side lost motor function my right side lost uh temperature sensation so my right side the masculine side like has yeah. uh work to do in terms of understanding the senses and and being able to step away from the senses and relying on the senses yeah. um and then my left side my feminine side needs to be able to step away from the idea of grasping or moving and so to embrace stillness and so you know everybody's uh and and how you describe that and how you uh look at that right so it's not something yeah. that is a blanket statement no it's like how do you interpret the experience that you're having with these things right yes. so so as i look at my experience i get to explore so like anybody that has ever written anything on this like there are certain things like diet right like yeah but it's interesting because before i even got diagnosed with ms my diet was moving in this direction anyway like i knew as a child before i had ever yeah you know did anything that m adults I, in my, my parents never did this, but I knew that adults did not eat food from packages and they ate organ meats. Yes. And so I knew that as, as a child, I was like, well, as an adult, I'll be eating organ meats because that's what adults do. So, and, and, and I don't know how I thought that because my, my, my dad won't even eat liver, you know? Yeah. So. So, so even though my mom did on occasion, um, but I, I, I just knew that I knew that I would be doing that. And here I am like, you know, like I eat organ meats, I eat brains and intestines and all of that heart and, and stuff. That's and so, great. so, you know, a large aspect of like, this is just, just being once again, in accordance with Tao, right? Yeah. Being again, in accordance with, uh, the self.
right? And, and with how we move through things and how we experience them, you know, and that's what a big part of my recovery yourself work is, you know, like mm -hmm. it is just, it is just how we, we, uh, you know, what we manifest is obviously what we are. So, so this is not, it is not some, you know, like I wouldn't look at it as some blanket. This is the emotional sort of thing that happens. It's like, well, what is it for you? You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. 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 So you and, already and did I think, it. And I yeah. think, you know, like, like Gabor Mate has some ideas about like what it's connected to, you know, because he likes to have answers, but I think answers are really the, um, I think it's asking questions. Yeah, it's I think really it's giving just about, breadcrumbs, you right? Know, and, and I don't, you know, again, if you ask questions, it's often associated with having an answer. And I don't think it's about an answer. I don't, I think that answers really, like, if you have an answer, then you're wrong, um, even if it's right for a time. Um, the idea is like, if you, if you solidify yourself to any one answer, any one right way of doing something, then you're already on a path to ego. I, yeah, I meant basically the questions that you were asking, like, what's the message for me? How is right. this showing up for me? How am I feeling right. about that? Those like kind just of questions. A, see, that's, that's more of an observation than a question, right? Oh, so you think like, of it more of an observation. Right, because yeah, yeah, yeah. you're just observing how you experience what you're experiencing. Yes, and yes. you don't, because if you were to define this as, oh, I experienced this as this, well, then tomorrow. Yeah, I agree. Are, I you agree. You may very well inadvertently remember yeah. today and tomorrow you might not be experiencing it that way at all. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you continue to define your experience as how it was, you know, on December 6th, yeah. 2022. Well, if yeah. you if you solidify yourself to that definition, then you are keeping yourself from growing. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So I think we're saying the same thing, just different language. But yeah, state state of observation, staying curiosity, curiosity, and observing. You know, yeah. it's always observing. But those are those questions, those open ended questions to get you. There's like the starter questions, like, how is this showing up for me today? How is this, how am I feeling in this moment? You know, those kind of questions to, to get you to pause, to go into your heart, to go into your field, your energy field and feel it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then don't judge it. Just yeah. let whatever comes, comes, allow it to be and, and just don't judge it, but that's where you get your insight and growth. That's where you get, I, you know, for me, you know what I call it? I call it the Scooby-Doo game. That's what I call it. <laughs> I'm just uncovering clues to my soul mm -hmm. field. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you know, like there's, there's like, they're all around, right? And they're the all more, around. They're, they're never... It, it's so hard, you know, like the Tao, you know, in the Tao, like the first verse of the Tao says, you know, like you can't express it. Like words, words cannot express the Tao, right? And, and yeah. so, and this is what, you know, this is why it's like there are clues. And when I say there are clues everywhere, it's like you can do what, like everything, literally everything that you're experiencing everything. is a clue. Now, everything. how can, how you experience everything is a clue how you experience everything every particular thing is a clue as well and some yeah. of those things are going to be paradoxical some of those things are going to be counterintuitive some of those things yes. are going to be counter to to the ability or it's going to be counter uh to the ability to speak about and um and and if you try to i i often think if you try to express well, you will always fall short. And that's one of the great things about the Tao Te Ching is it starts with that. It starts by saying, look, I got 81 chapters here of some shit, but there's nothing here that like, if you try to understand what's here, it's, and only what's here, it's going to fall short. Like you have to be able to step away from the words. You have to be able to step away from the ability to understand. 
because if you understand, you're probably wrong. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? You know, like, and, <laughs> and that's, you know, and, and I've, and I've, and I've learned that, you know, many times the hard way of just me kind of being like, oh, I get it now. And right. Two days later, you're like, oh, wait. Oh, wait. There's yeah. more. Yeah. There's, more. There's always more. There's always more. It's like, yeah, yeah totally. Totally. So I know we're, we're running short on time, but let's yeah. pick a number and see All if right. you can come back. All right. 37. 37. 37. 37 is entitled Inspired Action. Ooh. Dow never does anything, yet inspires everything to do. When beings maintain the action of Tao, they spontaneously transform from within. When that transform, when that transformation acquires a name, external forces inspire actions from desires. Actions without identity are free from external goals. Without desire, honoring stillness, all things are at peace. Mm. I love that. So what pops out at you? Um, I think, can you read, I think it was the first or second line. Tao never does anything yet inspires everything to do. Yeah, when I beings, love that. When beings maintain the action of Tao, they spontaneously transform from within. Yeah, so like that is, um, that line has a lot to unpack there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That, okay, so um, go ahead and, and yeah, I'll come back. Yeah, right let, let's get you off and back on. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Part. All right, let me leave. Okay, Read so these first, time. yeah, these are the, this, the these first, first two sorts of chunks, right? Like these yeah. two, like Tao never does anything yet inspires everything to do. That's actually pretty simple. Like Tao doesn't do it. Yeah. Like I'm inspired to do it through Tao. Yeah. Right. So, so in me, everything I do is inspired by Tao. Mm -hmm. Good, bad, indifferent, all of the things I do, even if I think I'm the one making the choice. Even if I think I'm using my free will, this is me being inspired by Tao. Yeah. Even if it's, you know, to hurt somebody, I am being inspired by Tao. Mm -hmm. Now, I am being inspired by Tao so that I can experience this hurting of somebody. Mm -hmm. and somebody else can experience this having been hurt. And understand that it is because there is you know, like we are here because we need to learn this, not because it's good or bad or anything or hurt or, or, or pleasure or pain or all those things are, are, are combined, but it's because like these things are happening and, mm -hmm. and we, we, we think we are the victims and we think we are the, you know, we, we have the ego and we have the victim and all of these, these ideas are, are running around in different people in different ways. And, and, that's where people like, that's where Dao is like, oh, this is what you're interested in experiencing in some way. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. we, we bring those together. And that is a very difficult conversation to have to, for victims. And it's a very difficult conversation yeah. to have for people um, who, uh, who are perpetrators of that because they're hurting as well. Mm -hmm. So, so Dao never does anything yet inspires everything to do. So all things that are done from animals and rocks and people and all of that, that is being inspired. Like, have, like sometimes I go on hikes and I kick a rock. Yeah. And I think, I didn't really think about doing that. I wonder if that rock wanted to move, right? Yeah. Like if, if the, if the, if the rock had an, had been inspired to move and I, because of that rock wanting to move, was inspired to kick it. Yes, it wasn't me. It yep. was the rock. Yeah, yeah. I have I have to share just a quick little story. So, when I started working with crystals, 
I was inspired to work with crystals, right? Okay. So I started working with the crystals and I'm very sciencey. So I found out like Einstein studied crystals and Marcel Vogel created the liquid crystal screen, which is on our touchtone phone. He worked for IBM, blah, blah, blah. All right. Anyway, so the, the I geeked out on crystals, right? Mm-hmm. So then I started like connecting with crystals and like talking to crystals or whatever. And sure enough, they're like, we inspire you to give us away, yeah. to move us mm-hmm. to, cause they have their own consciousness Yes, and they totally do. So that's, that's right. Absolutely. So, that's so awesome that you yeah. told the kicking of the rock story. So. I can validate that for you. I was yes, just like, absolutely. I'm like, oh my God, no way. Like, you know, it's so funny. Cause like, sometimes I just crack up like, wow, Isabel Zimmerman, you are so myopic in just being consumed, being by like being human. You know what I mean? Like mm. not even thinking like there's like different consciousness that are interacting with us, you know? Yeah. That's and and that's and that's and that's just truth, right? Like, why yeah. would why would a rock be any less than a person? Yeah, right. Yeah, why would a rock have any less desires than a person does? We yeah. just we just we have just gotten so far into the logic of like we are better and all of this. Yeah. So then, so then this goes on. So then, you know, Dow never does anything yet inspires everything to do. So I'm walking down and I kick this rock. I've been inspired by Dow because the Dow, because Dow is connected to all things, even this rock, and it's all connected. When beings maintain action of Dow, they spontaneously transform from within. I love this line. How do you interpret this line? Oh, for me, well, you know, when when you are when you're maintaining the action of Dow. Meaning when you are allowing yourself to be inspired by Tao to act and doing that, um, doing that in its natural course, Mm -hmm. you will transform from within. So you will, you will see yourself grow into a new person. If I look back at December last year, of who I was to who I am today, I am transformed. I am a completely different person than I was then. And I, and I, you know, like I embrace more and I'm, you know, like all of the things that I am are different. I'm not the same person I was. I mean, you can listen to Tao of the day from a year ago and you can listen to it now and it might not sound very different, but I am extremely different. Yeah. Like, and that's something that can't be really measured. This is a transformation from within. Doesn't necessarily like I, like I'm still in the same room that I was doing Dow of the Day in last year. I'm still I still you know like probably look similar. I still you know do some of the same things. But there is a there is a deep transformation that I understand that I have experienced that mm-hmm. maybe other people can't experience. But there is a transformation happening. Yeah, yeah. So my um, interpretation of that line is the integration part of being the Tao, feeling the Tao, taking action in this physical plane changes the inside of me. Mm -hmm. So it's like how I visualize it is sort of like this, um, the infinity symbol, the figure eight, the, the, the bending, the in and out, like the action is the breath out and then it changes me inside the breath in. And then the, again, I breathe out to change the in, the in and out the, Mm -hmm that the action, the beingness, the, yeah, that's, that's what, um, when I hear that line, that's what I sense and feel from it. Yeah. So when beings maintain the action of Tao, they spontaneously transform from within. Now, 
When that transformation acquires a name, and I put in, in parentheses in my translation, an identity, right? when, you, when you attach to that transformation, when that transformation that happens within, when you attach to that transformation, or when that transformation acquires a name, external forces inspire actions from desire. External actions. External forces. External forces. Inspire actions from desire. External forces inspires actions from desire. So do you think that's like the interaction with your environment? Your Yeah. So like I look at that as being like ego what other people think when your transformation, when someone says, Oh, like you've, you've changed so much. And now you're, you know, now you're no longer like for me as an, as someone who's coming yeah. out of addiction. Yeah. When beings maintain the action of Tao, which brought me to sobriety, we spontaneously transform from within. So my sobriety slowly changed me into something else yeah. but when that transformation acquired a name let's say sobriety external forces inspire actions from desire so now i desire to get more attention as someone who's sober i desire oh, okay and then, then external forces the desire for other external things start to inspire me rather than Tao inspiring me okay so instead of in getting inspired by Tao, I'm now being inspired by what I want, the mm. external forces, because I now have an identity that I've attached to my transformation. When that transformation that spontaneously happens because you're following Tao acquires an identity or acquires a name, external forces inspire actions from desire. Yeah actions without identity are free from external goals goosebumps actions without identity without identifying with your actions then they have no goal in mind once you start identifying with your actions the goals make themselves known because you're like oh this is what i want from this action Right, 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 right. That goes to like, because I, you both, both you and I create a lot, right? Mm -hmm. We're very creative, but it's very, um, I have to, to rein myself in or remind myself in, I am not my creation. Right. Even though it is my creation, I am not my creation. So it's like, I create and let it go, create, let it go. And the thing I, is, is, you know, like it, it, we're speaking of Tao. So I'm going to, I'm going to push on this because like, I'm a creator too. And it's not ours. It's not mm -hmm. our creation. Mm -hmm. It is the creation of Tao. Mm -hmm. And we, if we take any credit for it, if we take any ownership of it, mm -hmm. that's an external, that's an external force. Yeah. And you know, I'll notice that I'll even use this language with myself and and speaking of it, I say, I, I just brought it forth. That's right. That's right. I just brought it forth. And then here mm -hmm. we here we have the final line of this inspiring inspired action. Without desire, honoring stillness, all things are at peace. It just comes forth. And you know, like when we say honoring stillness, that doesn't mean honoring not doing something. Like you create it, but you create it in a still mind. Mm. Mm hmm. Without the goals, without the ego, without the external forces of, of desire for other people to, you know, praise you or to, to get something out of it. I know. And let me tell you, that's a doozy. That, oh, yeah. That's There's a no doozy joke. for me. That is yeah. no joke. Like, um, so I created this course called um, Embracing Change, or I brought it forth, right? And... Um, 
it's it's like it's very transformational and and witnessing the 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 folks taking the course like it makes my heart sore right mm -hmm. and but it's like i have to remind myself <laughs> rein it in just yeah. like rate like rein it in is about like because yeah because it's not the thing that's transformational the people are transformed because yes. they're, right like they're transformed that has nothing to do with you and your course yes yes Yes, but it, you know, it's tricky. It's like they can give it credit and you can you can take credit. But now that's that is that transformation acquiring a name, acquiring an identity. Yeah. 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 External forces inspire actions from desire and that's their desire to give you credit so they don't have to take it because that's too that's too powerful. And your desire to take credit because you have an ego and we all do and all those yeah. things are okay but this is the thing that is like this is the verse that is really kind of talking about that yeah. like, idea that your actions are inspired get get out of your own way and allow it to be and just just allow those things to exist out in the world and that's fine they're alive and the people that take them good for them yeah yeah because they're if, yes. if, if, if cause what happens if someone takes your course and doesn't and what happens if a dozen people take your course and don't transform yeah well then then all of a sudden you are going to beat yourself up or you're going to be like oh it's got to get better or other people aren't going to talk about it or whatever you know like yeah but yeah but all of that is just like oh you know you made it let it go yeah here you are yeah yeah it's true i mean yeah then I try to be very aware of that because it's yeah. a slippery slope. It sure is. It oh sure my is. gosh. It's like, it's like junk. You're like down. You're like, oh my yeah. God. <laughs> do you have another guest? I do ready? not. Oh, you do not. Okay. I can hang with you if you want, my friend. Mm. Um, yeah, let's talk. Let's talk about 47 if you can come back. Forty-seven was my number today, um, and I would love to. Like we 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 did Let's get through thirty-seven nicely. Um, so let me read forty-seven to you. Okay. You can understand all things touched by Tao. Well, no, that's not forty-seven. I thought I picked forty-seven. Mm, no, that wasn't the one that I picked. You know, it was about hoarding. We're talking about hoarding. Yeah, hoarding. Let me look for that word because I don't think it's H O A R D. Hoarding. Huh. Interesting. Oh, that is interesting. 46. It was 46. I don't know how I wrote 47 down. Maybe I should read 47. But I'm going to read 46 because I was reading it. <laughs> 46 is knowing when to stop. Okay. When Tao is followed, shelter, food, and water are prioritized. Going counter to Tao, excess and hoarding are praised. War, excess, and hoarding are praised. He who believes there isn't enough is cursed to never have enough. He who believes he must acquire will acquire nothing that lasts. There is no greater waste of time or energy than being discontent. Therefore, the master knows what is enough and is content to stop there. Oh, okay. All right. I like this one. I like okay. them all, really. Yeah, they're all so good. <laughs> they're all so good. They're all so good. <laughs> all right, let's read the first line again. Yeah, so the first line says, "The Dao, when Tao is followed, shelter, food, and water are prioritized. Going counter to Tao, war, excess, and hoarding are praised. Yeah, that, boy, that's a really, that's showing the design of the system to me. That's like, when I hear that, I'm like, yeah, that's the design of the contrast. Um, so, so Tao can represent many words. I'll tell you 
Tao represents many words for me, like life force, love, source, consciousness. It, it's all encompassing. All that is the Tao. Like when I, when the word Tao is said, right? Yeah. Tao is kind of the under, like for me, Tao is the natural order of things. Okay. The natural sort of ebb and flow of the universe and, and of all of the things. Like that's how I see it. But that's yeah, not, yeah, yeah. doesn't necessarily mean yeah. it's right or anything like that. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Okay. So the order, so like that, the order, the natural order of things, right? Like if you're in the Tao, food, shelter, shelter food, water, right. Is, is a priority. Right? right. That means it's like it's given that because that's a natural order. Like if right. you if you don't go into fear, if you go if you don't go into fear and you just stay in trust that you will be provided for, you <laughs> will have food, water and shelter. Right. Right. And you know, you look out, you know, I as a kid, even I always used to look and it's like birds just make their nests. Yes. Like these things, like all of these animals have a place to live. Why is it we got to have a, why is it we got to have certain houses on certain streets and certain, yes. things, you know, like I was always like, huh. Yes. Like, everything just has this stuff. You know? Yes. It's like yeah. I go on hikes and stuff. And I see birds just playing in a little, like, like a little pool of water that had fell, you know, like they're, they're washing yeah. up and stuff. And I'm like, well, we need the bathroom. Right. We need we need a specific room to do the water things. <laughs> yes. Like we have we have kind of. You know, when Tao is followed, shelter, food and water are prioritized. Now, if those things are being endangered, if those things are in danger of being taken from you or whatever, of course, you will you will defend because you're prioritizing those things. But going counter to Tao war is praised excess is praised hoarding is praised there's a difference between prioritizing something and praising it mm -hmm. and these two mm -hmm. lines point that out right yeah when dao is followed shelter food and water are prioritized they're put to the front of the list going counter to dao war excess and hoarding are praised yeah they're not prioritized or anything they're just praised yeah and in praising people start to lose sight of what is actually important yeah the mundane shelter food water you're praising war which can poison your water mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're praising excess which can threaten your food yeah you praise war, which could threaten your home. You, yeah. you, you, you praise hoarding, which can threaten, of course, all of those things. Because, oh, I have all of these homes, or I have all of this food, or I have all of the water, or I have all of the money. Yeah. I know. that, And that really, you can see that in our society. You can see how just this one line has created our paradigm right for sure even within me yeah yeah even within us of course because we're we're we're, we're products of this society you know mm -hmm. like we, we we are we are stepping away from it but i mean we look at like how, how how you know how much do we see you know we we are seeing more like drink water kind of things on instagram and stuff you're basically a house plant right da, 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 things like yeah that. and those are those are great those are great but those aren't the that, that's not the that's not the majority of what we're seeing on social media right we're not seeing yeah. the majority of like look at this simple food look at the fact that i can just pick this you know like when i go on hikes especially in the spring i pick um dandelion greens and i eat them just to remind myself that mm. i can eat food that is like food exists out here in the world and it's free yeah you know yeah but it's not it's not something that we praise i told some people i did that and they were like well what if a dog pissed on it i'm just kind of like well jesus that's okay too yeah you know yeah. like there's nothing there's nothing like like i do it and i don't get sick and i'm probably healthier than you because i'm you know like doing that 
yeah. because I, I introduce dirt into my body. I introduce those things into my body. And I'm not saying that everybody should do what I do, but I am saying that like I prioritize food and I, and I honor it without having to praise excess and hoarding, which moves us into the next line. He who believes there isn't enough is cursed to never have enough. He who Boy, believes he must yeah. acquire will acquire nothing that lasts. That is, man, that is so true. That That's revealing the code to mm -hmm. me. That line right there really reveals the code. Yeah. And you get so caught up, like, again, to me, it's like the, the creation bringing forth that course, right? Mm -hmm. If I don't stay in that love frequency of the joy of sharing the course or, or, um, that's it, right? Just that's it right there. Yeah. Stop. Like I stop right there. Right. Right. You and, can, yeah. you could get so caught up like, oh, well then I need to market it and I need right. to do this and I need to do that. And, and, and I really have to like, think of like my messaging around, cause there is some mark, like, you know, you're going to do the tarot deck, right? Mm -hmm. There is some marketing and how do you balance that? without going into the paradigm of the construct here of return on investment. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, well, right. And that's, and that's in keeping with Dow, right? Remember, yeah. don't yeah. overthink it. Don't yeah. like do it. Don't overthink it. Like yeah. do what comes natural. Don't force yourself into things. Right. Cause he, like, you know, when you believe you're not doing enough, you're cursed to never having done enough. Right. He yes. who believes there isn't enough is cursed to never have enough. That is so true. Right. So he who believes he must acquire will acquire nothing that lasts. And that's the thing. The more you try and bring in, it's just in trying to bring it in. You're not actually like you're not actually receiving anything. Yeah. You, know, you have to sit back and receive. And you yeah, do. sure. You know, like maybe there, like are but but the question then is what are you prioritizing? Because do you have shelter? Mm -hmm. Do you have food? Do you have water? And are you looking at those things and being like, okay, well, I'm going to create this course so I can make sure that like, cause I'm going to prioritize because I want to have better food. I want to eat better. Right. So mm. I'm going, and this is the reason why mm -hmm. I'm putting out this course so I can have a little bit more money so mm -hmm. I can eat better food. Right. Are you prioritizing that? Or is it like, because you want to have money in the bank because you want to hoard? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it's, um, you know, so the answer for me was I've been following a lot of inspiration and pushing past fear, but that had to be cultivated within me. Yeah, that no, to... that takes years. I mean, oh I'm, my I'm, God. I still, I still want money in the bank. Come on. Yeah. You but know? that's just to, that's because I have fear and I know exactly. that. And exactly. And that's okay. But like, it's a different level of fear than I think a lot of people have when they're just like doing things solely for profit. It's not, it's like, creating for me personally and i can only speak to my experience but creating for me brings some so when i when i am inspired by the non-physical team by spirit to me it feels like little packets of love little mm -hmm. packets of information and insight mm -hmm. and it's all for me all i do is when i receive the guidance and the counseling from within me I just take that and share it. Right. And that act of teaching reinforces the insight within me. Mm -hmm. So really I'm being selfish. Well, we have to be, well, because yep. this is our only experience, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, and, and that moves us into this next line. There's no greater waste of time or energy than being discontent. Why mm. would you be discontent about anything? Mm -hmm. You are here right now. And as long as you're, as long as you have food, water and shelter, like you're good. And if you don't have those things, you will acquire them. I mean, I, I, I know homeless people that get shelter, get food and get water regularly. That's not, that's not 
that's mm -hmm. like, you know, like I was talking to Andy out in New York and she talked to uh, a homeless guy who, you know, found a brand new iPhone and got like some crazy reward for returning it. Like the yeah. universe is, the universe is providing for everybody, everything. Yeah. You know, there is no greater waste of time or energy than being discontent. You're being discontent for no reason. You're being discontent because you telling yourself a story that is not, mm. you sure. know, that is not true, right? Because right now, do you have the things that matter? Shelter, mm -hmm. food, water. Mm -hmm. You may be afraid that you're going to lose those things, but that's a story. That's just a story. Therefore, the master knows what is enough and is content to stop there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. That's and that's awesome. and like the title of this knowing when to stop knowing you when know? to stop yeah the Tao is when Tao is followed shelter food and water are prioritized once those are there you stop and you sit and you eat and you sleep and you drink mm -hmm. your water you know and then and then you you eat that stillness will allow you to know know what to do next yeah it's not about it's not about like predicting or, or saving for the future because this is where you are now yeah so true allows you to be fully present in the now and really in the unknown at once yeah 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 you know, because when you when you have excess, when you have hoarding, when you have all of that stuff, that's all coming from fear. And I know because I want to do those things, too. But, you know, we 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 recognize that, we, that we'll never have enough. Yeah. Who believes there isn't enough is cursed to never have enough. That's true. Very true. All right, my friend, I'm going to go. Yeah, you have I love a you. Great, Thank you so much. Great, for coming. great morning. All right, honey. Bye. Bye bye. Okay, I am, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I got an MRI later today, and so I'm going to uh, end this talk. If you benefit from the work I do, and if you like the work that I put forth, please consider tipping me over on Venmo at Martin John underscore Garcia. I appreciate anything that comes in. It's always nice to get help keeping the lights on. Um, as I said, there is fear, <laughs> but it doesn't, it doesn't uh, rule the roost. So I appreciate all of you and all that you guys uh, pay attention to and all that you offer me in my work. If you are interested in learning more about the Tao, hit me up over at Instagram at Martin John. You can also talk to me here on Wisdom uh, weekday mornings when I do Tao of the Day. I will be doing the Day of the Tao. Maybe that'll be around the New Year sometime when I uh, start reading through all of my translations of the Tao Te Ching so that um, uh, just as a way of uh, announcing its release, uh, digital or physical or the app, um, the things that I'll be producing around my rendition of the Tao Te Ching. Thank you so much for joining me for Tao of the Day. I'm your host, Martin John, and until next time, keep recovering yourself.